this is a story. A story, a story about, about courage, courage individuality, individuality, and a need, and a need to, help to help others. others. A story, a story of, one of one hunter becoming, becoming something, something he should have never become. This, this is the is story, the story of, of the Bowman that just wanted, wanted to support. <laughs> and then I healed him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just out on an extreme furious arch-tempered white fatalist quest and I boosted their elemental defense so much that it flew away. <laughs> uh, hey guys. Are you support users too? The fuck did you just say? Well, I'm a Bowmane, and I kind of like to play support as well. Did. I. Stutter. That's right, idiots. This is a story of the support bow user. Is this the best support set around? No. no. Is it the best weapon type for a status application? No. no. Is it usable and super fun? Fuck yeah! So why even bother watching this video? Well, it's actually a pretty fun build and it's incredibly cozy. The damage output isn't bad either. Like, at all. And in a squad of four, it's super helpful to a lot of other weapons. So what's the idea behind this lonely hunter's build? Well, bow can be super safe. When we use skills to up our stamina and things like evade extender, we can just dance around the monster and never be hit. Also, who remembers the Kiabo Blast? It has critical status, decent attack and affinity, and now it comes with a nice, sexy new upgrade in Master Rank. To activate critical status, of course, we need to crit. So I have an unusual proposal for you guys to hit 100% without relying on any tenderizer or wounding. This is to further keep you away from the monster as your worry for hit zones has less stress now, and you'll be applying its status at its best potentially anyway. Also, when we're not using our coatings, uh, it's random whether the blast procs or not. And if we don't have 100% affinity all the time, that randomness clashes with the randomness of the affinity proc too. So it's more important here to go for 100% than it is a lot of the time otherwise. So to reach full affinity, we'll need, wait for it, one expert. Whoa, oh, yeah, I know, I know, uh, let me explain. So firstly, the bow has 15% natural affinity, and we'll be adding in an affinity augment to bring it to 25%. Our one expert gets us to 30% with its plus 5% in affinity. We'll be getting this from the brand new Alatrion Helmet Beta. Now we're using three pieces of Safi. This is for the status increase, the extra 20% affinity, and the Dragon Vein Awakening damage. We actually want this because we're gonna be using Latent Power, which will slot in with these gems. Bonus Vitality too. Dope. Our waste piece will be the Namayil Gamma. This gives us full evade extender to keep doing our monster laps and also means all our armor pieces have super high natural defense anyway. So now we have Dragon Vein Awakening damaging us. This... I dropped my phone. So now we have Dragon Vein Awakening damaging us. This eventually leads to activating latent power and gives us 100% affinity. This paired with our high attack and natural crit boost too actually applies some pretty nice damage over time from a really safe distance even if you don't take a single hit from the monster, which you shouldn't be with this set most of the time. You also have a natural 3 resentment from the Altrion helmet, which will always be active because of the Dragon Vein Awakening. And all this is bonus, because this is a support bow build, remember? Our charm is going to be the Razor Sharp charm. This means better use of our coatings and less trips back to camp. We'll add in a few physique jewels for constitution. Usually for bow, eating feline black belt means we don't need as much here, but we'll be eating for feline specialist. We get this from six purple food items, and it makes our status application more potent. Highly relevant. If you want to drop a physique or two, say another crit or any skill you like, remember that you get a massive 50% stamina reduction when latent power 5 kicks in, which is awesome. Just remember to be more careful with your stamina before it triggers. We'll add in a Fura Plus to complete our resentment and add in our Mighty Boat Jewel. For the rest of our skills, we'll fill out some medicine so our Dragon Vein top up rewards us better. Look, you, you don't want to be running a support set and taking up the cards, bruh. Also, why we're we not running Fortify here. We need an Affinity Booster Plus to throw down whilst Latent Power isn't active. Remember, you can activate here just by attacking. Plus, a booster also helps out your teammates. This means we'll always be at 100% Affinity even before Latent Power is active. So, we're being super efficient with our critical status and our damage numbers. 
For your last mantle, you can choose whatever you like. Uh, the Apothecary Mantle might seem like a good choice, but you proc with every coating anyway, so this just lowers your effectiveness in this case, so don't use that. I'm going with Evasion, I'll throw in a Physique and a Crit Jewel for it. So that provides us with these total skills. Latent Power level 5, which will activate quickly just from us attacking thanks to the Dragon Vein Awakening, giving us 50% more affinity and 50% stamina reduction too. Resentment level 5 will also always be active due to this, so some awesome bonus damage there. Constitution level 4 keeps up our stamina for our frequent attacks. Remember, we're eating for feline specialists, so we don't have black belt. Health boost level 3 for comfort. We're dancing around with Dragon Vein Awakening, so even though we're not going to be taking, hopefully, any hits during the whole fight, it gives us a bit more leeway for Rooms for Error. If we don't have enough health and we use Dragon Vein Awakening too much and it doesn't trigger, then you're gonna die. Evade Extender level 3 will keep us away from the monster with ease. You should be able to just run laps around him. Or her. Bit. You should just be able to run laps. Recovery up level 2 means our Dragon Vein recovery is less risky. Recovery speed does very little here, but you know, it comes with an ammo at least, so bonus. Blight Resistance level 2 is just bonus, but not bad. Crit Boost level 2 ups our damage. Critical Eye level 1 brings us to 100% affinity here, somehow, with magic. <laughs> Thanks, Alatrion. Oh, you're welcome. Bow Charge Plus ups our status application and damage with another level of Bow Charge. Spare Shot helps us use less coatings and therefore lets us spend more time being valuable in the fight. Critical Status also ups our status application, which should be active all the time no matter where the monster is hit. And don't forget to set your Botanical Research Center to grow the things you need to craft during the set if you'd like to. So Toadstools, Parashrooms, Sleep Herbs and Fire Herbs. Right, let's sort out our layered armor. So we need our regular old item loadout, every single status coating and the ingredients to make more, if you want to do that. You should really be adding the crafting options to your radio menu for the setup, but don't forget you can save a custom radio menu to each item loadout. This prolongs our time in the fight even more so, just by seconds, but it matters. So how are we playing the set? Find yourself a team that needs you and spawn in. Take your boosts, find the monster. Bear in mind that different monsters have different resistances to statuses and may even be immune to some of them completely, so check your hunter notes first. Firstly, hit your affinity booster, unless you want to wall bash the monster first. This will bring your affinity to 100% whilst we wait for latent power to kick in, and potentially help your teammates too. Ignore this next part for relevant immunities, obviously it depends on the monster you're hunting. So whack on your poison coatings and get the monster poisoned first. Once it is, switch over to para coatings and paralyze it. This will give your squad a great opportunity for damage all whilst the monster is taking poison damage too. Switch to your blast coatings and start laying down some damage until the monster is freed from its paralysis. We don't want to use sleep just yet because it might knock the paralyzed monster out of that state too early. When it's finished its paralyzed animation, whack on your sleep curtains and fire away. If you have a team prepared for a nice wake up, that's great, but don't stress too much if not, as the sleeping and waking animation is another great opportunity for free damage. You could think of it like a mini paralysis. After this, remove the coatings and start using your normal arrows. Now is around the time where the affinity boost will fade, but latent power should kick in. Also boosting your stamina further. The reason we're holding off on cones for a short second is to do with most monsters' status threshold and their resistance building, but after about a minute, whack on your poison coatings and repeat the steps previously mentioned. If you do this correctly, your team will love you. The monster will barely have an opportunity to move, be taking a lot of blast damage, and be poisoned near enough constantly. If latent power drops, just use your affinity booster again, but it should activate again pretty quickly. You actually only need to take 180 damage for latent power to work, and each arrow shot will deal just under 5 damage to your own health thanks to Dragon Bane Awakening. This means that after 40 shots, latent power will activate all by itself, but you don't even have to worry because every 8 shots will heal you up more health than you've lost, boosted further by our recovery up skill. If you get hit, things can get a bit messy, but on a brighter note, latent power activates sooner. By the way, have you guys seen this attack number? Like, for a bow that's not even purposely built for damage, that is not too bad at all. Especially backed by 100% affinity, full resentment, and 2-3 to three crit boost. Yes, we may not have our crit element, or our spread or force shot jewels, etc. But remember, this is a fun old, unique, for now, support bow. It just happens to contribute quite nicely damage-wise, and you don't have to worry about spread shots, weak points, or any other risky ways that bow can be utilised for more damage. Of course, if you can sneak in a spread, do so, as it applies the status and damage better. And if you can hit a weak point, obviously go for it because that'll do more damage anyway. Just, you don't need to worry about it this time. Another way you can help your team is by wounding weak points for them during the times you paralyze the monster or when it's down. 
So you don't want to trigger some statuses then, and it may already be poison. So if your teammate are running Wex especially, just go for wounding here and be the ultimate team player. Final note. This seems so stupidly unusual, and it is just a bit of fun, but you may be thinking why not just run like Bogun, and you're not wrong. But if you can, try this build. Seriously, it's a super fun way to play, and god knows we need more of these. And it actually works way better than you're thinking. You'll make loads of new friends online too, and I need friends to live. I hope you liked the video. Will you be trying this in the future, or have you tried something similar? Like so and subscribe, spread the word, and look after yourselves. Thank you.